Christ is in me and I'm in Christ and all that and you're not following the laws? No, you're wrong. The way we know that we are in Christ and we have the love of the Most High and Christ is in us is because we follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Once you turn away from your carnal nature, once you start ignoring the Christian pastor and understand he has no concern for your soul, then you can start to get the love of the Most High. Right. That's right. Is that the end of verse 5? Keep going. Hereby know we that we are in him. That's how we know that we are in him. All of this, Christ is in me and I'm in Christ and all that, and you're not following the laws? No, you're wrong. The way we know that we are in Christ and we have the love of the most high and Christ is in us, is because we follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Once you turn away from your carnal nature, once you start ignoring the Christian pastor and understand he has no concern for your soul, then you can start to get the love of the Most High. Right. Then you can start to get Christ in you when you start making that transition. Listen, you can come to the school exactly how you are. You just can't stay that way. Right. You right. just can't stay that way. That's right. And that's the problem with the Christian church. They let you be exactly who you want to be all day, every day. With no concern for your soul, no concern for what the Most High wants, no concern for anything except your money. Right. At the end of that one, take me to Romans uh, 6 and 1. But this is what we have to understand. Christ did not do away with the law. That's another lie that the Christian church tells. The Christian church tells you that well, God, when, when, when Christ died, well, well, that means it was the end of the law because we're under grace right now. And they want to make you believe that grace is a license to sin. That's essentially what they teach. No, that's absolutely wrong. Listen, everybody got a, a power bill, right? You go behind on your power bill, you might call them up. They're going to give you what? A grace period. What does that mean? That you don't have to worry about anything anymore? Right. No. That gives you some time to get it together. That gives you some time to pay the bill. That's grace. Grace is time for you to come back to these law, statutes, and commandments. That's, right. That's all it is. And if you continue to ignore it, then you're ignoring everything Christ died for. You got what I want? Go ahead. This is the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? What does that mean? That means, well, what are we supposed to do? What shall we say? We got a choice in this? Well, well let's talk about it. Let's figure this thing out. What are we supposed to do? Keep going. Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we just continue doing whatever we want to do? Should we continue breaking the most house laws? Should we continue eating pork? Should we continue eating shrimp? Should we continue eating crab? Should we continue celebrating Christmas? Should we continue singing these wicked hymns? Singing these wicked hymns in church? Should we continue having the so-called church service on a Sunday, which is the worship of the sun? Should we continue all these things? Let's see. That grace may abound because grace abounds. That's what the Christian church says. Because grace abounds. We are under grace. You ain't got to worry about it. So you can continue to sin. That's literally what the Christian church teaches. You can continue doing it. It's okay. Just come in here. Say I uh, you know, uh, apologize to Christ. I think the Catholic church got some old rituals they do with some Hail Marys and beads. I don't know. But there's always a ritual that it's okay. It's not that big a deal. All you got to do is just come back say you're sorry. That means that you can continue to sin. It's a license to break the law, statutes, and commandments. Come on, come. Jeremiah 20. Let me Jeremiah 23 and 21 real quick, man. Like what that priest is saying is very important. It's very important, man. The Christian church is the reason why our people are destroyed. The Christian church, like our people, sincerely, many of our people actually do want to serve God. They actually do want to serve God. That's why you see so many people leaving the Christian church. The more and more as the truth comes out about what's in the Bible, what the Bible actually says, all of those things, how we not supposed to eat whatever we want, how Jesus didn't die for everybody. As the truth comes out, brothers and sisters that sincerely want to serve God, they are leaving the Christian church, man. Right. If you're really serious about serving God, you need to get in the ISUPK. 
There is nowhere else to learn how to serve God. There is no other body of Christ outside of the ISUPK. There is no protection from God outside of the ISUPK. There's an important thing for our people to learn because the Christian church has made our people believe that no matter how I live, God is still on my side. Right, right. God wants our people to learn something about church. If you are black, Hispanic, and Native American, understand this. Black people get murdered every summer. Right. Nobody starts summer thinking they're going to get murdered. That's right. If you got a brain in your head and ears on your face, it would behoove you to listen to what God is having the prophets bring out. Right. Right. Read Jeremiah chapter 21. Jeremiah. This is the book of chapter Jeremiah. 23. Verse 21. The Christian church weakens Latinos, man. It destroys Latinos. It destroys blacks. It destroys Native Americans. It destroys Latinos. It makes us hate our natural hair. It makes us hate our skin color, hate our bodies, hate our lives, hate our communities, hate our families. It makes us fight and kill each other, abort our babies. It makes us build gangs by the hundreds, city upon city, and fight each other, kill each other, kill your own members. Make a drug cartel, kill your own cartel members. Right. The Christian church, and when I say the Christian church, I'm also talking about the Muslim mosque. Right. Right. Every religion in the black community, whether you Egyptologist, you Moorish science, you a Rasta, you a Christian, you a Buddhist, you a Muslim, everything that our people believe in is Christianity. Right. Every religion, every religion was created by one race of people for them to have an advantage over all the other people. Right. To unite their people, to promote their culture, and to give them some dominant standards to join their people together, to defend them against the other races of people who are doing the exact same thing. The Christian church is the reason that our people don't take God seriously. Right. Right. Don't take the Bible seriously. Our religious leaders have taught us that we are free to live lives any way that we want. And because of that, there are a million of us in prison. There are millions of us with permanent diseases we cannot get rid of. Right. Our families are destroyed. Our kids are destroyed. And we don't have our identity. Right. Nothing on this planet that God created does not know what it is. Everywhere you see ducks, the ducks know that they're a duck. Right. Everywhere you see a wolf, that wolf knows he's a wolf. Right. Everywhere you see cats, the cats know I can climb. I got claws, I meow, I purr. You never see no cat trying to bark. Right. You never see a fish trying to jump out of the water and walk on land like it's a person. Right. You never see a Chinese man pretending to be Japanese. You never see a Jewish man pretending to be German. Right. You never see anything God created pretending to be something else that it is not. Right. Except these 12 tribes of God. Right. These 12 tribes pretend to be everything because we don't know who we are. Right. And here is the reason why. Read this. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 21. I have not sent these prophets. The Lord said he has not sent the prophets, man. The religious leaders that our people chose to follow, God did not send them. The only men that God sent was Commander General Yohanna. And he rose up the Israelite school of universal practical knowledge to send men out to wake our people up, to teach our people the truth. Time out for lies. The Bible says lies have made the hearts of the righteous sad. Right. Lies about who is your father. Why won't your mother let you see your father? Right. Lies about where are you from? What is your race? What can you eat? Who is your God? Who are your real friends? Brothers join a gang and don't find out you in a gang full of enemies until it's time to do some time and you realize all your homeboys snitched on you. Right. Like YSL. Right. That's when you find out I'm out here robbing and shooting people and these brothers will have sex with my woman as soon as I get locked up. Right. They'll put a gun in my son's hand and teach him to do the same things that got me tied. Right. Because I'm a Christian. Right. Because I'm a Muslim. Because they're a Muslim. The only solution is for us to change and turn back to serve the Lord. Right. But we can't because we are all trapped in these silly religions following leaders that God did not send. Right. Keep going. Yet they ran. They're leaders that I didn't send, yet they ran to you. Marcus Garvey ran. The political leaders ran. Ralph Abernathy, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, John Lewis, Martin Luther King, they ran the black people. Right. Caused you to march. Million Man March, I Have a Dream March, the March on Washington, Selma, Alabama, 
all the lunch boycotts and marches trying to beg our oppressors for love. Right. Old black men in their fully gray hairs with their hair gone spent their youth fighting to make the same white man killing them that's killing us love each other. Right. The same thing we've been fighting against for generation after generation is still a problem to this very day. Right. Except now, less of our own people care about it than they did before. Yes, because of the leaders that we have. Keep going. I have not spoken to them. The Lord said, I didn't tell Farrakhan a damn thing. What right. did God say? I have not spoken to them. The Lord never told Jamal Bryan and Creflo Dollar a damn thing. That's what did right. God say? I have not spoken to them. God never spoke to Martin Luther King. That was his own dream. Right. He had a dream about white women. Right. I ain't never had a dream about white women. Right. You understand? He had a wet dream about white women. Stacking hoes up two, three at a time with the church's money right. in the Watergate Hotel. That was right. his dream. You understand? Keep going. Yet they prophesied. Yet they went on the streets and talked to you like they were men of God. They spoke to you like God told them that integration was what we were supposed to do. They spoke to you like being a drug dealer was what we supposed to do. Being a Christian and a Democrat and a Republican and having abortions and being feminists and being LGBT and being gang members and murderers and joining their democracy, right. joining their military, right. their Marines, their right. Air Force, their Army. Right. And we did it all. We got rid of the Negro Leagues baseball, basketball, football. There was even a nigga hockey league, Mataza. Right. Niggas was on ice. We had everything we needed. They invented it. Everything. And we followed men that God did not set up. And look what we lost. Right. Who owns the baseball league now? White boys. Right. Who owns the basketball league now? White boys. Right. Who is everybody coming to see play football? They coming to see the white boys throw the ball? No, they coming to see the quarterback run faster than their white running backs. They coming to see gigantic six foot six black men throw a football and run 20 miles an hour. They coming to see 300 pound brothers break frail white quarterbacks in half. Right. That's why they keep changing the rules. Am I lying? Right. Who they coming to see? White boys do layups? They coming to see seven foot niggas dunk a basketball from the damn free throw line. Right. That's who they coming to see. So why did we get rid of our Negro leagues to join their leagues? Because of these men that God didn't send, right. that tricked everybody into believing that they were men of God. Right. What did they do? Keep going. But if they had stood in my council. If they stood in my council. See, the council of the Lord is only in the ISUPK. Right. And God sent the ISUPK out in the 60s before we became Democrat and Republican. Right. Before we became Afro-American. Right. Back when we were still nigger and colored and Indian and Mexican and Puerto Rican. Back then, God sent the prophets out to warn our people. Right. God sent the prophets out. And our people decided Islam was the way. They decided the Black Panthers was the way. Right. They decided that, that, that Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X was the way to enlightenment and the truth. Right. And what happened? All of those brothers that followed those political movements, what happened? We ended up killing each other, fighting each other. Every city, California, Chicago, Detroit, Philly, Baltimore, our communities got filled with pills, cocaine, heroin, weed, all the drugs to this very day right. have continued to plague our community because we joined the people God did not send. Every Sunday you listen to the preacher. 20 years, 40 years of listening to preachers, black women being told they don't need a man no more. The female roach knows she need the male roach. Right. The female chicken knows she need the rooster. Right. The female fish knows she need the male fish. The lioness knows she need the male lion. Right. But America done told black women they don't need a black man. Right. They could be a mother. They could date themselves. Right. They could marry themselves. Right. Some broad put a ring on her finger in a wedding dress saying, I'm marrying myself. That's what Maya said. I can do bad all by myself. No female on the planet says that garbage to their men. Right. This is because of the leaders we follow. That's right. This is what God has been saying since the days of Jeremiah. Keep going. And had caused my people to hear my word. If they listen to what God actually said, blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans would have actually listened to what God said, and we would have never took crack cocaine. Right. We would have never got on heroin. 
You would have never been prostituting yourself for pills. You would have never been on OnlyFans. Your daughter wouldn't be in the strip club. Your son wouldn't be in prison for murder. Our people wouldn't have AIDS. We wouldn't be men trying to be men and women trying to be a man and a woman trying to be a man. We wouldn't have any of these problems. All of that